Took me long enough to get to this one. Okay, I've already shit on this company once before for the worst TTRPG I've ever read. And now I'm gonna talk some praises about the same company. R. Talsorian Games, Cyberpunk Red. This game is very complicated, but I love that. It's based entirely on skills and roles, rolling a d10 plus your ability and ranks in said skills. Even your weapons are based on those skills. Cyberpunk Red is considered the worst of the Cyberpunk tabletop games, but it's the worst of a great game, so take that as you will. When it came out, it got a lot of hate, and now it's getting more love, and I think that's because of Cyberpunk 2077 isn't unplayable anymore, and the Black Chrome book that came out for Red has added a lot of stuff. Now, I mentioned roles, spelled R-O-L-E-S. There are 10 roles in the Cyberpunk Red core rulebook. I'll list them as follows. Rocker Boy, who can manipulate a group of fans into doing whatever he wants, being either a cult leader, a musician, or even a politician, I argue. Solos are hired guns, assassins, brute forces, or just snipers. Netrunners are people who can get into the net hack, which is essentially Web 9, including the NFT scams. Techs make guns, cybernetics, and other such things, and the book may not even have, really. Medtechs are doctors of the world, combining metal and flesh to fix and mend. Medias are talk show hosts or net blog runners. These guys always have a connection to someone important. Execs are your corporate powers who give more power to their companies, even though the fourth corporate war ended with the time of red in 2023. In August, it's coming. Lawmen are police officers or renegade cops who are looking to protect people or bring uh, justice to the scum or corpos. Fixers are your guys who know when you need a job, information, devices, or just a guy. Nomads are your car dudes. You need a car? They got a car. You are getaway drivers, your smugglers, your road warriors, or your highwaymen. Now, each of these roles gets a role ability fitting them, whether it's the rocker boy's charismatic impact or the media's credibility. You're usually assumed to be starting at four ranks in the role ability, and I'm certain the book tells you how to gain more ranks. Of course, it could just be a case of GM says, hey, this went up, which I don't like when games do that. But let's talk about ability scores. You start with intelligence, reflex, dexterity, technical, cool, will, luck, move, body, and empathy. Let's clear a few of them up. Intelligence is your smarts about how the world works. It can work into machine knowledge, but it's more medical and world knowledge. Reflex is your ability to dodge and avoid getting hit. Dexterity is your finesse with small weapons and firearms. It also lets you leap and move. Technical is your machine know-how, how to make a car run or how to make a computer boot up. Cool is your personality and way about people. Will is your state of mind and self. Luck is just that. It doesn't come up much. Move is just that again. It depends on how your game master wants to run the game, as there are multiple ways move can work. Body is your HP determining factor. And empathy is your knowledge on others and your humanity. You can either do quick builds 
random rolls or a specific point buy. If you do the point buy, you start with 62 points, though sometimes you may be given more if the GM wants you to be more or less powerful. Nothing can be higher than 8 or lower than 2, but you can keep everything at 6 if and you want. Each of these abilities plays into other things, including skills. Speaking of skills, let's talk about that. Now, skills have a lot of rules, so let's go over in a quick and dirty look. You get 86 skill points at character creation. No skill can be higher than 6 ranks. This does not include your ability. Some skills must be at least two, and you have to spend points on these. These skills are athletics, brawling, concentration, conversation, education, evasion, first aid, human perception, language, street slang, local expert, your home, perception, persuasion, and stealth. Some skills are marked as master skills with a X2 and those cost two skills to go up one level. You get four levels in a language based on your cultural origin, which is selected in the Life Path section on page 45 of the core rulebook. Now, how many skills are there? Boy, howdy, a lot. 66 skills that I've counted up. Now... You can argue that's a bit overwhelming, that some can be conjoined into one. For example, handgun, shoulder arms, and heavy weapons and auto fire. A lot of those you can argue are one and the same. But at the same time, the fact that they are different means you can hyper-specialize, which is something I prefer, to be honest. Now let's talk about gear real quick. I know this video is getting long, I'm trying to just sit with me for a few moments. You can get weapons in melee and range, you can get cybernetics, armor, clothing, and gear. Each of these will do different things, yada yada blah blah. Melee and range weapons are fairly obvious, but some have requirements of certain ability scores and skills. Cybernetics are things you'll probably be spending most of your money on, as the world revolves around them. From eyes that can zoom and enhance, to cell phones in your brains, to a hand that can launch and grab the second floor. If you're a net runner, you're just a hacker in general. Some of these are required. You, but do be careful as too many cybernetics can turn you into a cyber psycho. Breaking your humanity and making you hand the GM your character sheet. Therapy helps with these, just as it helps in real life. Armor doesn't exactly prevent damage, or prevent you from taking hits. Only your evasion does that. What armor does is it reduces the amount of damage you take. Clothing is more for manipulating people, as it can help with showing off your capabilities, what you have. It can help you get in with certain crowds, too. And gear can often be replaced by cybernetics, like that brain phone I said earlier. But they won't turn you crazy, but they can get broken or stolen. Now, there's still a lot I can go over, and that's part of the issue with it. There's almost too much somehow, and nothing at all in the core rulebook, which is a weird contradiction. RTG has an issue where they sometimes forget to put information you absolutely need, and often just say, uh, figure it out and give no examples of how something can be used. But on the other hand, they get really specific with, say, humanity and HP. Honestly, I gotta admit, it's not great, but I like it. 
especially how you can make a whole campaign with absolutely zero combat. I'll give this game a 79%. Too much of some things and not enough detail just randomly, but allows an insane amount of customization, which I absolutely think is fantastic from both a player level and a game master level. But that's my opinion on Cyberpunk Red. Now, shove off.